When learning about web security, SQL injection is one of the most important topics you'll come across. In particular, the union-based attack is a powerful technique that lets attackers extract data from a vulnerable database. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how this works in a way that's easy to understand, even if you're just starting out. By the end of this video, you'll not only know how union-based SQL injection works, but also how to apply it to extract sensitive information from a database. Let's get started. First, let's quickly recap what SQL injection is. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it's the language that databases use to communicate. When you fill out a form on a website, like a login page or a search bar, that data is sent to the server, which then sends it to the database. The database reads the SQL query and responds with data. In a secure application, user input is carefully handled so that it doesn't mess with the SQL query. But when there's a vulnerability, attackers can insert or inject their own SQL code into the query. This allows them to manipulate the database and retrieve or even modify data they shouldn't have access to. In this video, we're going to focus on the union-based attack. Unlike the basic SQL injection, where we try to bypass login forms or cause errors, Union Select allows us to combine the results of two queries and retrieve data from multiple parts of the database at once. So, what does union-based mean? In SQL, Union is used to combine the results of two or more select queries into a single result set. Here's a simple example. Let's say you have two different queries. One query selects product names from a products table, and another query selects customer names from a customer's table. By using Union, you can combine these two results into one list. The key thing to remember is that for Union Select to work, the two queries must have the same number of columns. If they don't, the database will throw an error. This is why one of the first steps in a Union Select attack is to figure out how many columns the vulnerable query is using. So for our attack, Let's start with step one, finding the number of columns. Let's begin by looking at the target application. Here we have a web page with a search bar where users are supposed to input a keyword to search for products. Behind the scenes, this search query is sent to the database as part of an SQL statement. But this page is vulnerable, meaning that the user input isn't properly sanitized and we can inject SQL code into the search bar. The first thing we need to do in a union select attack is figure out how many columns are being used in the original SQL query. Why is this important? Because when we combine our query with the original query, the number of columns in both queries must match. So how do we figure this out? We can do this by injecting an order by clause. The order by statement is used to sort the results of an SQL query by one or more columns and it works in every SQL query that returns data. We'll use this to figure out how many columns the original query is selecting. Here's how we do it. First, we input a simple payload like this single quote order by two and two dash symbols. Order by one. We can see that the query executes without an error. We know that there is at least one column. Next, we try order by two. That works. We try three. We keep increasing the number until we get an error. When the database throws an error, it means the number we tried is too high, meaning there aren't that many columns. The number just before the error is how many columns are being selected in the original query. As you can see, the query breaks when we try order by six, but works with order by five. This tells us the query is selecting five columns. With that out of the way, we move on to step two, identifying displayed columns. Once we know how many columns the query is selecting, the next step is to figure out which of those columns are displayed on the page. This is important because only the data in the displayed columns will be shown to us through the injection. To do this, we simply inject number values into the union select query. This method is often more practical since it allows us to see exactly which columns are displayed based on where the numbers appear on the page. Here's how we do it. Since we found that the original query has five columns, 
we inject the following payload into the search field. Single quote, union select, one, two, three, four, five, and two dashes. I prefer to use 11 or 111 or something similar to avoid any confusion with the database in case the database has uses numbers as an ID in its first column. As you can see after the execution of the query, the first column one does not appear, but the following column do indeed appear, and we know their positions. Therefore, we know how to take advantage of this to extract data from the database. With that being said, let's move on to step three, extracting data using union select. Now that we know which columns are displayed, we can use the union select statement to extract data from the database. Let's say we're trying to get the usernames and passwords from the database. The user's information is stored in a table called users, and the columns we're interested in are username and password. Here's the query we inject. Union select 111 username password 444 555 from users along with two dashes. What happens here is that the database will combine the results of the original query with our injected query. Since we found that the second and third columns are displayed, the usernames will appear in the second column and the passwords will appear in the third column on the page. Now we've successfully used SQL injection to extract sensitive information like usernames and passwords from the database. There is actually another step that can be done sometimes, which is step four, retrieving table and column names. What if we don't know the exact names of the tables or columns we're trying to extract? No problem. SQL databases have a special part called the information underscore schema, which stores metadata about the database itself, like the names of tables and columns. We can query the information underscore schema to retrieve this information. Let's say we want to list all the tables in the database. We can inject the following query, union select null table underscore name from information underscore schema dot tables dash dash. This will return a list of all the table names in the database. Consequently, it will helps us find the name of the table that contains the users that might have different names at times, users, accounts, creds, logins, or anything really. But since I am making life hard on myself, I have used SQLite for this demonstration, so I cannot use the previous query because it's only used for MySQL. So the query that I will be using is union select null name null 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 from sklite underscore master where type table. As you can see, this will give us the names of the tables available in our database. Once we have the table names, we can then query the columns in those tables. Here's how we can list the columns in the users table. We use the following query, union select column underscore name from information underscore schema dot columns, where table name users. This will show us the names of all the columns in the users table. And from there, we can extract specific data like usernames, passwords, emails, and more. Again, because my life is upside down, I am using SQLite. I cannot use that, so I will use the following query. Union select null, SQL, null, null, null from sklite underscore master where TBL name users. This will allow me to extract the structure of the table itself. As you can see in the result of the query, we can see how the table structure looks. It has an ID column, a username, a password, and a full name. And with that information, we can execute the query in step three, which will allow us to extract the information from the users table. That's it for today's lesson on union-based SQL injections. If you found this helpful, be sure to check out my other videos on web application penetration testing to level up your ethical hacking skills.